Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachachachwarash, and double honors to the apostles, the bishops, and the elders at Great Millstone, who rule well. Peace and salutations, as always, to the elect. And I wanted to do a lesson going into the rich man and Lazarus parable, you know, as spoken by our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, Mashiach here in Luke the 16th chapter 19 all right um, and it goes all the way down to uh, 31 and um, it's a beautiful parable has a lot of symbolisms to uh, you know ultimately Jacob and Esau all right and us you know the remnant of Israel who are being raised up in these latter days you know uh, from a very very low estate you know, that stems from the curses, all right, which were placed on us uh, for breaking that first covenant in the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, all right, 15 through 68. And ultimately, uh, here in these latter days, as it said in the book of, you know, uh, I believe Deut Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter, you know, after all of these things have come up on us, you know, the blessing which we received. You know, uh, the blessing under Solomon and then the curse, you know, were, you know, the curses of disobedience to that covenant, you know, the curse that came, you know, from Solomon's fall, which the kingdom was rent. You know, we've been uh, placed in these captivities, but in the latter days, we would acknowledge why we're in these captivities. All right. And, you know, ultimately our curses would start, you know, to uh, hit our enemies now. This is coming off of some controversy surrounding, you know, uh, the death of this individual here, Jacob Rothschild, okay, which we know what Rothschild mean. Let's show you if you don't know. All right. Because basically he, he passed away. And here you go. The name is derived. All right, from the German Zumrothenschild. All right, with the spelling meaning at the red shield. All right, and these are the red people focused on in the Holy Scriptures that would rule in the latter day. Okay, the biblical Edomites. They would have the fatness of the earth. All right, and in this parable, they're going to be linked to the rich man. Now, this individual. All right, died. See, just go to news. All right, he passed away at the age of 87. See, and, um, you know, he's known for his riches. Okay, he's known for his many riches and being a part of a family, you know, that's uh, ultimately uh, tied to the banking industry. See, which is a big part of why everybody's in debt. See, and these people are sitting on a high horse. So this individual passed away. And a particular camp, you know, did a video talking about this individual is going to be burning in hell. Right? He's going to burn in hell. And they use particular talking points out of the rich man and Lazarus, which will, uh, you know, which will break them down. You know, brothers, you know, apostles, elders have already went into it, but the spirit hopped on me to, you know, jump into it as well. Um, but I'm like, you have this. This is the uh, elder Karataza of GMS Vegas. GMS Vegas sit down is 144K. Now he's responding to a video done by the elder apostle Tahar, GMS declaring the end. How can you serve us as slaves and burn in hell forever simultaneously? And that is a great question because if this individual is going to merely burn in hell, all right, then there's a lot of questions that have to be answered. As the scriptures tell us the fate of the kings of the earth and how they would serve slavery. And the biblical Edomites after a thousand year period you know, will be utterly destroyed as a nation. Thus said the Holy Scriptures, the volume of the book. All right, you'll never see an Edomite anymore, but for a thousand years, 
they will serve hardcore slavery. And this is also the camp, you know, that teaches the uh, Jehovah's Witness doctrine, you know, that basically, you know, after the 1,000 year period, the Edomites will come out of the caves, which the Jehovah's Witness don't call them Edomites, but they say basically the people who are in league with Satan are gonna come out of the caves and rule, you know, and rule, you know, and you know, be able to push their lies and, you know, start a war and all of this garbage. But, you know, the title to this video in short is IUIC has to answer these hell questions if the spirit is working with them. Okay, so how is this individual going to be burning in hell forever, but at the same time serve us? All right, which speaks to the, the fact that hell, all right, and heaven are conditions played out on earth. The hell that they're going to be in is going to be on the earth, which hell can be the grave. Hell can be a messed up condition, all right, or it can be symbolized as the future judgment, all right, associated with the nuclear fire as it is tied to Gehenna, which was a place in uh, south, southern, south of Jerusalem where they burned trash you know they did a lot of wicked rituals burning children you know but it's, it's symbolic of fire okay so there's this there's not a place you know where you know these these wicked people go all right they say including israelites where they're just gonna burn forever that doesn't make sense and it doesn't line up with biblical prophecy as the kings of the earth are gonna clearly all right, be in a hellish condition in a form of captivity. All right, so check out this video and it'll kind of tie into what we're talking about here today. But all right, again, the, the question is how can these individuals serve us as slaves and burn in hell simultaneously? That doesn't make sense. All right, so getting into this parable, all right, because as it says here, in the book of uh, Ecclesiastes 11 and 28, it says, Judge none, bless before his death. See, if you don't have understanding of the scriptures, you'll, you'll, you'll be ignorant of how the Heavenly Father deals with death and spirits and regeneration. See, you would think that this individual, Lord, <laughs> Lord Rothschild, which the character Mr. Burns uh, is a... a uh, myth or you know a saying that the character mr burns in the simpsons was really you know s s s about this guy but if you look at him he died a trillionaire there's actually an article where his family's fighting over his estate it's showing you that the curses is on these devils you see but if you look at it he died blessed all right he wasn't in hardcore captivity you know he had you know as the book of job talks about the the, the rich have you know, everything at their beck and call, they, they, they have their heart's desire. You know, their, their riches are passed down. All right, Job 21 and 7, Wherefore do the wicked live and become old? Yea, they are mighty in power. See? And that's how you look at Lord Jacob Rothschild, which he's, he's, he's not a lord. He's the lord of the flies. But on the left-hand side, he is a lord. All right? And... They deal with all kind of wickedness, but it says their seed is established in their sight with them and their offspring before their eyes. See, he was able to see his offspring, okay, uh, you know, flourish in the uh, legacy that he's passed down. See, and now they are arguing over it. Their houses are far from fear. Neither is the rod of the most high upon them. You're not going to see, all right, the, the, the police driving around in the neighborhood where the Rothschilds live. You're not going to see Rothschild walking around Walmart or Whole Foods, you know, uh, getting a bag of, uh, you know, unsalted raw cashews. All right. Asking, you know, the, uh, the people at the store, you know, uh, do they do they have any of, of a particular wine? You're not going to see Rothschild and them doing this. See, their houses are far from fear. The, the rod of the Most High ain't upon them because they're in their blessing. All right, their bull gendereth and fell it not. You know, they, they eat the healthiest of the, the, the cow, the cattle. Okay, 
They let, uh, verse 12, they take of the timbre and harp and rejoice at the sound of the organ. Those weird parties where they, they you know, they, they wear these masks and dance. They were very weird people. They spend their days in wealth and in a moment go down into the grave. All right. Therefore, they say unto the Most High, depart from us, for we desire not the knowledge of thy ways. See, and as you keep reading, ultimately, you know, you would think that they just spend their days in wealth and they just die. See, and we know what happens when you go to the grave. The flesh returns to the dust as it is dust. And the spirit returns to the most high. That's both for righteous and wicked. As the scriptures say, all go to one place. All right, let's get that real quick. Ecclesiastes 3 and 20. All go unto one place. All are of the dust. All right, both righteous and wicked. All right. And all turn to dust again. Who, who, who knoweth that the spirit of man goeth upward and the spirit of the beast goeth downward into the earth? See, when you go upward, you're going to, you know, basically, you know, present yourself before the Lord. All right. Receive whatever judgment is tied to that spirit. And then you rest until ultimately the Lord spends, sends that spirit down into the earth again. The animals don't have to go before the judgment seat of the Heavenly Father. They're just in line. See, so the spirit of man goeth upward. All right, and it says here, all go to one place. All are of the dust. See, the spirit returns to the most high who gave it. Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. Okay, so the uh, Christianity used to teach that when you die, you either go to heaven or hell, but they switched it up. But now you have Israelites, ironically, taking on this, this uh, doctrine that ultimately uh, you go to hell if you do wickedness. See, and the Rothschild is not in hell right now, this guy, okay? He's going to return, all right, as, as we read here, judge none, Ecclesiastes 11 and 28, blessed before his death, for a man shall be known in his children. See, he's going to be known in his children because he's going to come back, all right, into the earth. All right, he died blessed, see, but he's going to return cursed, see, I believe that's Sirach, the 41st chapter, let's get that real quick. Let's see here. Verse 8, woe be unto you ungodly men which have forsaken the law of the most high if ye increase it is for your destruction and the lord has allowed these devils to increase but they haven't acknowledged the most high if ye be born ye shall be born into a curse if ye die a curse shall be your portion okay all that are of the earth shall return to the earth again all and what happens to the spirit the spirit returns to the most high who gave it so the ungodly shall go from a curse to destruction see and this is what's going to happen all right and the lord is going to bring destruction now when you keep reading all right uh as a matter of fact let's go to the 20th chapter because it kind of you know the triumphing of the wicked is short you know it goes into that you know, Job 20 and 15, he has swallowed down riches and he shall vomit them up again. See, but he died blessed. See, but he's going to be known in his children. All right. That which he labored for, he's going to restore because he have oppressed and forsaken the poor, violently taken away a house which he, which he built it not. All right. The British, you know, America's, what, what were they known for? You know, colonizing. See, but as you keep going down, just to get to the point, let's see here. I'm in 21 and 30 is what I'm looking for. Start at 29, Job 21 and 29. Have ye not asked them that go by the way, and do ye not know their tokens, that the wicked is reserved for the day of destruction? They shall be brought forth to the day of wrath. 
who shall declare his way to his face and who shall repay him for what he have done see yet ye shall be brought down to the grave which the grave is associated with hell in the bible hell is the grave or a, a messed up condition on the planet earth see it, it, it symbolizes basically your rulership will be buried and you should remain in the tomb all right and this is what's coming to the wicked and we are here set to tell them these things to their face you see now going to this parable to bring it all home you have the rich man all right which is esau and you have lazarus which represents jacob see who would be in a lower state so the parable goes in verse 19 luke 16 and 19 there was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and far sumptuously every day okay now purple and fine linen okay let's go to the book of revelation And 17, let's look at Revelation 17, okay? And four, and the woman was arrayed. This woman represents Babylon the Great, this, this system, this beast system, all right? A scarlet colored beast system that we're living in. Scarlet is what? A derivative of red. Revelation 17 and 4, and a woman was arrayed with purple, all right, and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones, having a uh, golden cup in her hand full of the abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Babylon have been a golden cup in the hands of the Lord, which have made the earth drunken. This represents this wicked, satanic power structure that rules the earth, and who are at the heads of it are the wicked elites. All right, as the scriptures say, we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but against principalities, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. They commune with these demons, which ultimately is all an assignment given unto them from the spiritual demon Satan to fulfill the role of Satan on earth. All right, because the Heavenly Father controls both what? Wicked and righteous. See? So this, this woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color. This is symbolizing Babylon's riches, okay? Their rulership, all right? And, and, and here in Revelation 18 and 16, and saying, Alas, that great city which was clothed in fine linen, purple and scarlet, okay? And decked with gold and precious stones. And there's also a scripture where there, it's called a scarlet beast. Okay. Revelation 17 and 3. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet. Okay, let's look up scarlet. Scarlet colored beast. Okay. Now in the scriptures, who's known as the red people? The Edomites. Scarlet colored. Scarlet, all right, Kokinos. Okay. Let's see if we let's see if it links it to red. Boom. Resembling when consumed produces a red. See that? Red. Okay, as a matter of fact, let's just look up scarlet. So you can see that it's closely associated with red. This is another way of saying a red colored beast. Okay, this is the red people of the Bible and their rulership. Boom. Strong, vivid, red, reddish, orange like Trump. <laughs> okay. Scarlet. Oh my goodness. Goodness gracious. Hey, but you see that? That's Satan. <laughs> All right. But scarlet color, boom, there you go. 
25 shades of scarlet. It's all associated with reddish, you know, pinkish, orangish. But it all points to red, okay? The red beast, okay, that rules, all right, in prophecy. So going back, okay, we can clearly see that within the first scripture, this is talking about Babylon the Great. See, Luke 16 and 19, there was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. Okay? He, I mean, he has his heart's desire. Sumptuously meaning you, you have plenty. Right? Lamprus, or pros, splendidly, magnificently, sumptuous living. Okay? Sumptuously. As a matter of fact, real quick, let me see, because I know that word is used somewhere else. Unless I'm tripping. But let me see real quick. Internet is a little acting a little slow, but yeah, this word, let's see, isn't it used? Nope, it's not used nowhere else. Sumptuous. Alright, I thought I thought there was a word where it was used. But anyway, going back here, so Luke 16 and 19, and there was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores. All right. And being laid at the gate, meaning the poor would basically, you know, go to the the. Uh, the gates where certain nobles and you know rich men would enter in so that he can ask money of them all right and the scripture said that we would be all right want all things get that real quick because the word lazarus all right when you look it up all right it, it goes to the word izar or eleazar all right it just means who god has helped all right Allah, power, Izar, all right, helped. Who the power has helped. That's where you get the, the name Eleazar or Izar. Izar simply means help, to be helped, all right? And when you get Psalms 115 and 9, O Israel, trust in Yahweh. He is their help and their shield. See, so Lazarus is pointing to Israel, which in prophecy... Okay, Deuteronomy 28 and 48, and thou shalt serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. All right, we will go to our enemies in want of all things. Okay, we would have to go to our enemies for particular things within this captivity. So we are what known as the beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores. Okay, let's get Jeremiah 31. Okay. Jeremiah 31. And let's get, or Jeremiah 30. So lock it, Jeremiah 30. And 12. For thus saith Yahweh, thy bruise is incurable and thy wound is grievous. There is none to plead thy cause that thou mayest be bound up. Thou hast no healing medicines. See, this is the nation of Israel. All right, as they would need help from the Most High. Nothing in the world worked out in our favor as a nation. The bruise was incurable. Only, only something of a higher power can cure this bruise that has, you know, uh, overcome our nation, right? All thy lovers have forgotten thee. They seek thee not. For I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy, with the chastisement of a cruel one, Esau, the rich man, for the multitude of thine iniquity, because thy sins were increased. See? So there is no, no one to plead or cause to help with this wound. See? And again, this is, this is all talking about 
what's going on with Jake, Lazarus. There was a certain beggar named Lazarus, all right, which Lazarus, the, 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 uh, what did the Lord say? Okay, let's get Zephaniah 3 and 12. It says, I will also leave in the midst of thee an afflicted and poor people, all right, and they shall trust in the name of the Lord. See, so the, the elect would be an afflicted and poor people, but they would what? Trust in the name of the Lord. All right. The remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity nor speak lies. So the remnant of Israel would be in an afflicted and poor estate. All of our people would. All right. But the elect would be what? Rich. Okay. In faith. James 2 and 5. Hearken, my beloved brethren, have not the Most High chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, to be heirs of the kingdom? which he have promised them that love him. And this is what this chapter is going into, being heirs of the kingdom, coming from that low and poor estate, being raised up to the kings, all right, and rulers of this whole entire planet Earth, ruling even over the rich man himself. Okay? So there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. See? The crumbs which fell from his table, the tax returns, which that's your own damn money. Okay? These, these assistant programs, which all nations are on these government assistant programs, but the focus is always on Jake. All right? But you have more Edomite. You have all kind of nations on these programs, but Jake is known for it. Jake, all right, wants to be fed with the crumbs which fall from the rich man's table okay and that's what rich people will do they're, 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 you know their dogs would eat their crumbs okay <laughs> it says moreover dogs came and licked his sores dogs all right came and licked his sword now the dogs represent and symbolize the other nations all right benefiting all right benefiting from 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 ultimately our wombs okay as the scriptures say it's in the in the curses deuteronomy 28 and 43 the stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high and thou shalt come down very low so in the neighborhoods that jake live in okay you don't have any Jake owned businesses like that. You have a few. You have, you know, the Jake will have a restaurant, you know, or some, you know, a food truck, you know, stuff like that. All right. But when it comes to actually owning the businesses and, and, and things that uh, control, all right, the, the, you know, that have a root in the, the economy, all right, it's the eater, it's the, the heathen, all right, the, the Elamites. Okay, the uh, the Ethiopians, okay, so-called Ethiopians, which are Hamites, Africans, Arabs, okay, they lick the the, the they're in our neighborhoods, the, the Chinese, the Japanese, all right, they're in our neighborhoods licking our wounds, okay, dogs like a wolf, you know, they love blood, you know. <laughs> they can survive on blood. It's just so them licking our wombs is symbolic of them, all right, benefiting off of the source. Because remember, Lazarus was full of sores, so he's leaking. He's he's leaking, you know, discharge. He's leaking blood. But the dogs, which when you look up this word dogs, right? The dogs. And bear with me. We have to go through these precepts to make this thing come to life the word dogs all right ki ku on all right means what metaphorically a man of impure mind an imputed man that's these beasts that rule over us as a matter of fact the book of uh second esdras all right 6 and 56 as for the other people which also come from adam Thou hast said they are nothing but be like unto spittle. 
and has likened the abundance of them to a drop that falleth from a vessel. And now, O Lord, behold, these heathen which have ever been reputed as nothing have begun to be lords over us and to devour us. See? But we thy people whom thou hast called thy firstborn, thy only begotten, thy fervent lover, are given into their hands. If the world now be made for our sakes, why do we not possess an inheritance with the world? How long shall this endure? All right, and we know that the Lord has set everything in its time. And he, he's not going to move hasten or move the times until the said measure be fulfilled. That's in the book of Second Edges, the fourth chapter. Okay. This is the book of Second Edges, chapter three. All right. And twenty three. Or is there any other people that know thee besides Israel? Or what generation have so believed thy covenants as Jacob? And yet their reward appeareth not, and their labor hath no fruit. For I have gone here and there through the heathen, and I see that they flow in wealth. And think not upon thy commandments. And especially the Edomites. Okay? With the, the, the wealth they've you know been blessed with on the left hand side. They have done nothing to uplift righteousness. They don't think upon the commandments. All of these heathen that are in our, you know, Jake's neighborhoods, they're not thinking on the commandments of the Heavenly Father. They're, they're selling you things that were scientifically created in labs to go against your, your genetic makeup. See? So there you go. The heathen flow in wealth, and they don't think upon the commandments of the Heavenly Father, but now they're lords over us. See? So this is what this is symbolizing. A dog is a man of an impure mind. The scriptures say, blessed are they that keep the commandments, because without are dogs. So these heathen, okay? And then you have Jake in a heathen-like state, but these heathen are those dogs. See? That, that are licking the wombs. So let's read it all. Let's start over and we'll read down Luke 16 and 19. And there was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fought sumptuously every day. All right. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores. So you should understand that now. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. All right. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Okay. So here. All right. The, it was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Now the bosom is a place of nurturing. All right. Now, when you look up the word bosom real quick, let's look up the word bosom. All right, colpos, the front body between the arms, which, you know, when a woman, you know, is nurturing her child, that's where she has them, you know, hugging them, you know, breastfeeding, whatever, all right? The bosom of a garment, upper forepart, all right, keeping for carrying things, the bay of the sea, all right. Now, when you go here, in Abraham's bosom, all right, to be designated bliss in paradise, light foot, Horus Hebrew Talmud, all right. But there you go, all right, to be designated bliss in paradise. Okay, and in the closest and most intimate relation with the Father, John 1 and 18. No man have seen the Most High at any time, all right? The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, all right, he have declared him in the bosom of the Father, meaning in his good graces, see? And we're joint heirs with Yahweh Shai, okay, through a promise that was given to the seed 
of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. See? We're joint heirs with the blessedness. All right? It all goes back to the foundation of the earth. In the very beginning, before the earth was created, the Lord blessed us with these things. But in earth, there were particular things that tied the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all right, to the blessing of the whole entire planet earth that was first given unto his only begotten son. See? And we're going to be joint heirs with him in the rulership of the entire planet earth. You see? And again, when the elect spirits die, okay, they go to a special region in the spiritual realm. Okay? Especially the teachers, the men of the Lord, it talks about how they go under the altar. Their souls are under the altar because their, cre their spirits were created, all right, as a, for a very special purposes the first fruit spirits but that's a whole nother lesson for a whole nother time so being in abraham's bosom okay it, it just also mean when we go into the spiritual realm all right and we all go before the most high you know the, the there's a blessing tied to the elect of israel see so this beggar died and what happens when you die the the, the flesh returns to the earth the spirit returns to the most high. All right. The rich man also died and was buried. See. And in the hell. All right. Because when you go into the blessings that are associated with Jacob. Okay. Let's get it real quick. Let's get Jacob's blessing. Let's get Genesis 27. And this is all parabolic, it's sim symbolic talk. Okay? This is why the men of the Lord have to, you know, bring, bring these scriptures out. The, the men of IUIC, they are not the men of the Lord. They tell you some things that are true, all right? But the, the overall breakdown of the scriptures, a lot of these camps are showing themselves, all right, to be slow bellies. And we're not saying that out of pride, but they're breaking the scriptures down wrong. Okay? Because if someone is burning forever in hell, how is these prophecies going to be played out? Where the, the, the kings of the earth are bound, bound in chains. Come on, man. This is the book of Genesis 27. Get the blessing that was given to Jacob. Genesis 27 and 28. Therefore, the Most High give thee the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. All right. Meaning you'll control the resources of the earth, basically. Okay. That you'll have control of it, which it was also told to Esau he would have the fatness of the earth. See? But these are two separate blessings. The rich man had his blessing. So it's going into what Jacob will receive. And li listen to what it said. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren. Now, who's Jacob's brethren? The Edomites. Be Lord over thy brethren, meaning you will be Lord over your brethren. See, right here, this guy is Lord over us. Lord, he's, he's called Lord Rothschild. See? See? He's Lord Rothschild. He's Lord over us in this system of Edomite supremacy, which is really the blessing given to Esau that he would have the fatness of the earth and all of the dew of heaven from above. See, but it's a temporal blessing. Okay. And when you go to the, 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 the three unclean frogs, one of the unclean frogs in which allows this man to rule, okay, is the banks, the banking dynasty that comes out of london and he was a part of that okay these are the people who who rule the world through the banks man okay See? Lord 
Rothschild upheld family's legacy to benefit UK, Israel, and Jews worldwide. Hmm. See that? And again, he had a part in establishing the state of Israel. You hear this ain't an Edomite? This is clearly an Edomite. Right? But look who it all profited. Who established the state of Israel? The, 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 the British? The UN? Which is nothing but the elites under a whole different, you know, another, you know, monkey or name they go by. So, come on now. <laughs> come on now. So, so, Jacob's blessing is associated with these very people who were, were ruling at one point. All right? Bowing to him. All right? So if they're, if they're going to go to hell and burn forever, how are all of these things going to be fulfilled? Because that will be their hell. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Okay, cursed be everyone that cursed thee, and blessed be everyone that blessed thee. So the Edomites, all right, which are the brethren and the, 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 the mother's son, they're going to bow down to the, the Israelites. Okay, kings, Isaiah 49 and 23. And kings shall be thy nursing fathers, meaning they're going to serve you. And their queens, thy nursing mothers, they shall bow down to thee with their face toward the earth and lick up the dust of thy feet, which is symbolic that they'll be our footstool. All right. And shall know that I am Yahweh, for they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. So, so the kings and the queens of these heathen are going to what? Nurse nursing fathers which the word nursing all right amal all right ah uh, of salakia aman to support to be faithful to support to uphold they're going to support us and the scriptures talk about blessed are those which bless thee all right cursed be those which hate thee and come against you so the heathen will be blessed in the sense that when they follow the ways of righteousness, yeah, they will be, they'll be rewarded, but they'll never be on our level. And they're going to what? They have to, they're going to uh, uh, support us. See? They're going to be faithful to Yahweh Bashim Yahshai and the holy people. Okay? So, so what is this talk of hell? See? In, in hell he lifted up his eyes the rich man being in torments and see Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom meaning we're tied to those blessings that were given unto Abraham all right which ultimately goes to the promises that were passed from Abraham Isaac to Jacob which gives us rights back to the Garden of Eden eastward in Eden the Holy Land to set up our government under who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ Okay, and this word hell, let's get Isaiah the fifth chapter to give you a symbolism of hell. Isaiah 5 and 13. Therefore, my people are going into captivity, which the heathen are going to go into captivity. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Okay. Um, because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst. Therefore, hell have enlarged herself and opened their mouth without measure and their glory and their multitude and their pomp. And he that rejoiceth shall descend into it. Pomp. The pomp is their pride. Okay? So this is what happened to the nation of Israel. Okay? Hell enlarged herself and we went into captivity. So the hell that these heathen are going to be in is associated with captivity as well. Okay? Revelation 2 and 26. 
And he that overcometh that keepeth on works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule over them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken in shivers, even as I have received of my father. That is hell. They're going to be in a hell, a hellish condition on earth. Okay? Like David talked about hell. I believe uh, Psalms 118 maybe. Or one. Sorrow, yep, Psalms 116 and 3, the sorrows of death compassed me and the pains of hell got hold on me. I found trouble and sorrow. So hell is symbolic of trouble and sorrow. Hell can be symbolic of literally the grave or hell can just be speaking of destruction and fire that's associated with the valley of Hinnom, Gehenna, Gehenna fire. But this whole concept of a god of the underworld where people are burning forever, that is a what? Cunningly devised fable that you can't go to the creation story and find. Where, if you, if there, where, where was hell created in the creation story? As we go into prophecy, the heathen, okay, Isaiah 24, okay, because again, the scriptures talk about the rich men. Let's get that real quick. When the Lord returns, Revelation 6 and 15, when, the, when war breaks out and the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bond man and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. So why ain't they in hell? Okay, this is before we come down and get them. And said to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne. And from the wrath of the Lamb. How are they going to be able to hide themselves? I thought they, shouldn't they be in hell at this point? Is this judgment day? For great, for the great day of his wrath is coming. Who shall be able to stand? Another scripture and another thing. Revelation 19 and 20. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues of nuclear fire. Okay. Yet repenting not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and wood, which neither can see, hear, nor walk. Okay? And neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. Okay? That's these people. These are the ones who, 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 who sit on a high horse. All right, and have benefited from rape, robbery, and murder like nobody else, and have the whole world in debt. You see? So Isaiah 24 and 21, and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high. This is how Lucifer falls from heaven. Lucifer means he who bears the light which they call themselves the Illuminati, all right, and also, okay, uh, uh, that is talking about the king of Babylon in Isaiah, the 14th chapter, okay? So the Lord is going to punish the, the host of the, of the high ones that are on high and the kings of the earth up on the earth, and they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit, and they shall be shut up in the prison, and after many days they shall be visited, See? What the hell is IUIC talking about? And then, the, 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 anyway, Psalms 149, and, and uh, this is salvation, man. Psalms 149 and 4, the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory and let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of the Most High be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. Yahweh Shai just said, I'm going to give you a rod of iron to beat their ass with. 
to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. <laughs> this is one of the nobles. Okay. Let's just type in those two names. And noble. History of the Rothschild. Prominent German family established the banking and finance. Yeah, this that's the, these are the nobles. <laughs> these are the nobles of the day. Okay. Anyway, what I'm trying to do is look up uh, a noble cause and a noble decline, Lord Rothschild. He was into philanthropy. I can't, it's, it's slipping my mind what it is, so I just want to know. Desire to promote the welfare of others, yada, 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 benevolence, humanitarianism, which, man, let's get this scripture here. Because people, and when he died, nobody cares. <laughs> this is where you devils are Isaiah 32 and 5 the vowed person shall no more be called liberal nor the churl said to be bountiful because when you look at the comments associated with his death Queen Elizabeth's death nobody give a damn but let's look up the word noble where was we at they're nobles with fetters of iron they're kings so again, if they're going to be bound in chains and, and fetters of iron, how in the hell, how are they going to be burning in hell? Kabad, to be heavy, weighty, to be honored. See? And we know that that's talking about the, the rulers of this world. We ain't got to go too deep into that. Let's go back to the parable. So with those scriptures alone that we just brought out, which the scripture can't be broken. Those prophecies have to be fulfilled. Clearly, okay, <laughs> they're not going to be burning in hell. See, and this is the scripture that an IUIC will go to or a Christian will go to to say, see? So he's going to be in hell, Luke 16 and 23, in hell. He shall lift up his eyes, all right, being in torments. All right, and see Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. See, and that's the blessings associated with us being returned to the promised land. Okay, and everything that was given to our father Abraham passed down to Isaac, not Ishmael or any of the other uh, sons. All right, but, but, but then, all right, from Isaac it went to Jacob, not Esau. And then that blessing fell upon the 12 tribes. So he's going to see us in our kingdom while he's in hell. His heaven was our hell. Our heaven will be his hell. Point blank period. Okay? You ain't going to be lifting up your eyes while you're burning. All right, the, 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 you know, come on, man. It's all symbolic. And he cried and said, Father Abraham. All right, because they come, all right, out of the loins of Isaac. The Edomites, right? So now they want to acknowledge Abraham as their father. When they have not uplifted any other ways of righteousness, they have not promoted the kingdom of heaven. Now they're in the hellish condition. Now they're going to what? Want to what? Father Abraham, have mercy on us and send Lazarus. Meaning Lazarus went, all right, it was trading places. Lazarus went from a poor man to now he's ruling. And the rich man is now, all right, calling on him. As a matter of fact, when you look at the blessings in Deuteronomy, and you read 28, verse 
1 through all right, uh, uh, 14, it's the blessings. And these are the blessings that are going to come up on us when we have the law, statutes, and commandments written in our body, in our inward part. Okay? Deuteronomy 28, 7, The Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. All right? They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. They're going to be through. Okay? We're going to be blessed. Right? Let's see here. The point I wanted. Boom. Verse 28 and 13. The Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only. And thou shalt not be beneath. See? If you hearken to the commandments. But the commandments are going to be unto us. Verse 12. And the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure. All right? The, the heaven to give rain unto thy land in the due season and to bless all the work of thy hand and thou shalt lend unto many nations and thou shalt not borrow. So again, under the curses, we're going to have to go to the heathen to try to ask for loans. And, but in the kingdom, it's going to be turned around. See, the curses are going to fall on our enemies now. Deuteronomy 30 and 7. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thy enemies. Now we went through the curses. Was any of the curses burning in hell forever? No, we called hell on earth. The scriptures tell you the place of judgment is on earth. Okay. Get back into the flow. Ecclesiastes 3 and 16. And moreover I saw under the sun. The place of judgment. That wickedness was there. And the place of righteousness. That iniquity was there. Alright. The holy place. The holy land. is wickedness. Iniquity going on over there. And the Lord always eventually moves on that. So the Lord is going to put these curses upon our enemies. Upon them which hate us. That's happening now. And it's going to only further as we go from glory to glory and get those laws in our inward part. So right here, Luke 16 and 24, and he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on us. See, because in the kingdom of heaven, when, when, when these heathen don't keep the ways of righteousness, when they don't, okay, Zechariah 14 and 16, it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from one year to year, from year to year, to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. They're going to have to send representatives of their nations, all right, to Jerusalem to give alms, gifts, tithes, pay tribute on our holy days. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of the families of the earth to Jerusalem to worship the king, Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahushai, upon them shall be no rain. See? We're going to be able, we're going to have a spiritual harp. All right? And we'll be able to make it not rain where they live at. We can re replenish it when we want. <laughs> but this is the power we'll have in the kingdom. If the family of Egypt go not up and come not that have no rain, there shall be the plain where the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles, meaning they will be in disobedient. This will be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that keep not the Feast of Tabernacles. So this is just giving you an insight that our law, statutes, commandments will be implemented as everyday life. And holy days will go from Christmas to Passover. All right. Or from Easter to Passover, all of these holy days that are that, that are shoved down your throat, Thanksgiving. OK, none of that will be anymore in the kingdom of heaven. They're going to be forced to follow our ways. OK. So going back here, Luke 16 and 24, the rich man. Cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy upon me 
and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. All right. For I am tormented in this flame. Okay. Because hell is going to be put on them, man. Okay. That's what that's talking about. They're going to be in, they're going to be in a, in a, they're going to be catching hell. So they'll be looking for relief. Just like we looking for relief. Okay. You get two days a week. If that, you know, to, to be off from work. <laughs> We call pure hell in this captivity, man. The hardcore captivity. The mental torment. Well, that's all going to be turned back on y'all. Y'all you, you, will rape, rob, you know, our women in front of us. We ain't going to be doing stuff like that. But we have righteous ways of torment that's coming unto you. See? But Abraham, okay, the father of the promise, all right, said son so right here it says i am tormented in this flame again this is symbolic okay goodness gracious man y'all think he's really in, in burning literal flesh coming off and he's 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 asking for some water just put it on the tip of your finger man that just rip that just represents how the the difference in in our, our rulership and how low they're going to be. Let's look up this word flame. Maybe something may not be. A flame. Just a flame. Okay. And that's all symbolic. Okay. divine judgment the flame of fire in revelation 1 and 14 of the eyes of the lord as an emblematic of penetrating judgment searching out evil okay so it says here Luke 16 and 24 and he cried and said father Abraham have mercy upon me and send Lazarus all right that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame and he catching hell man but Abraham said son remember that in thy lifetime thou receivest good things you see and that goes back to the blessing that was given to Esau all right, Genesis 27 and 39. And Isaac, his father, answered him and said, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven from above. And by thy sword shall thy live and thou shalt serve thy brother. And he did serve us under King David. But at the time of Solomon, he uprooted from under that. All right, but he's going to serve us again in the kingdom. And it shall come to pass that when thou shalt have the dominion, Thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. That happened, you know, under from under King Solomon. You know, the Edomites, um, you know, at, literally after uh, Solomon's rebellion, all right, the Edomites literally rebelled. All right, you can read that. I believe that's 1 Kings 11. Okay, that's going into that prophecy, all right, that they would come up from up under the uh, rulership and dominion of uh, David. But in the kingdom, we know this is going to be eternal. See? So, you receive good things. When you read about Babylon the Great, that's the good things that the, the rich man received, his blessing. And likewise, Lazarus, evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou shalt be tormented. Meaning in the kingdom of heaven, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword. All right? Revelation 13. All right, this is just the fulfillment of prophecy. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. See that? This is what we're patiently waiting for. Okay? Luke 16 and 25. But Abraham said, 
son, remember, all right, that in thy lifetime receivest good things and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, helped of the Most High, and thou art tormented. Boom. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great goal fixed, see, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us, all right, that will come from thence. Now let's read this in the NLT. It's so basically the blessing we have, it's no way you can come into it. You can't be joint heirs of the promise that was given to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, which fell on the head of the 12 tribes. You have your blessing, we have ours. NLT. And besides, there's a great chasm separating us. No one can cross over from you to you from here, and no one can cross over to us from there. So you can't be partakers of the blessing, which that's all Christians are trying to do. They're trying to what? Form this thing called replacement theology, where now anyone of any nation that believes in Jesus, all right, fulfill Israel and can be heirs of the promise. No, that promise was made to the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Point blank, period. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, thou wouldest send him to my father's house. Okay? So th these devils went from being on, the, on, the, on this high horse of winning. Now they're begging for the influence of Lazarus to help them. Which that's symbolic of Jacob, Esau. Jacob and Esau. For I have five brethren that he may testify unto them lest they also come into this place of torment. All right? And I know Esau, there was a point where he had five children by one of his wives, but, you know, let me see here. But, you know what, I'll, I'll leave that alone. All right? It's something that was tied to Esau and five, but I saw the apostles go into it. It's not talking about the dukes. There's more than five dukes, but there's some kind of association with Esau and five. Let's see here. Let's go to Google. Let's see if we can find something here. So it says five here, right? But he had more than five. Okay, he had five sons by uh, Adah, Eliphaz, this guy, Jehush, Jalam. All right. So did Esau have five sons? Yeah, Esau had five sons. Wow. How many children did Esau have? Five. Interesting. Esau had five sons. There you go. But his sons multiplied, you know. Yeah, people are asking where 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 <laughs> where are the Edomites today. So there you go. Esau had five sons. Okay. Interesting. So what does it say here? Yep, Esau had five sons. For I have five brethren, okay, which basically is his offspring, his, his posterity, you know, his people, that he may testify unto them lest they also come into this place of torment. No, all of y'all are going to this place of torment. None of y'all found place of repentance because a lot of people like to say, well, it was just Esau who couldn't find repentance, but his descendants can. Then they'll say, well, the Edomites were already destroyed. They're all over the place because Esau is right before your face, man. Okay? These are the Edomites. Look at them. He's as ugly as he can be. Ugh. 
But he rules over you. These people rule over us in this system. Okay, and the, all of your children, all your whole seed is going to come to this place of torment, all right? Because it's going to be, none is going to be remaining of the house of Esau, all right, at one point. Luke 16 and 29. So right here, Luke 16 and 28, for I have five brethren that he may also testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. See? But now they want to listen. Abraham said unto them, they have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. All right? Here it is, y'all are uh, descendants of, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, Abraham and Isaac. All right? And again, Esau knew about what came with that birthright and he threw it away. You know, he didn't give a damn. He was basically living in the moment. He wasn't, he's not a spiritual man. <laughs> and the in the poor in the in the rich man said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. All right? Let's read this in the NLT. All right. Meaning send send one from the dead to come and tell my people, you know, like like that are on the earth. You know, like, damn, you know, send, send, send somebody to tell them to stop doing wickedness. No. Esau found no place of repentance. Y'all are y'all already set. NLT says the rich man replied, no, Father Abraham, but if someone is sent to them from the dead. All right. Then they will repent their sins and turn to the most high. No, you won't. Again, no place of repentance. Hebrews 12 and 17. Now, you know that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. Okay, and that falls on his descendants. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. And here he is trying to do it now. Okay. And he said unto them, him, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, which you don't listen to the prophets. You don't care about the laws of Moses. You don't care about anything righteous. Neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. And Yahweh Shai rose from the dead. See? And you, you don't believe you don't you don't promote the son of the most high as to how this world is going to be ran in your new world order you promoting your pseudoscience so anyway the point was made hopefully i will edify it on to the next shalom